FEMA, welcome to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Thank you, Donald. It's great to be here. It has been enormous fun uh, working with you. For well, me it's, too. it's almost enormous fun, but I mean, they're actually collaborating on the level where we're uh, both at the piano. And we're performing the Brahms, uh, three of the Hungarian dances, and we're also performing three of the Slavonic dances by Antonin Dvořák. And uh, we've, we've already talked about this, FEMA. It's just fascinating the, the actual, uh, the, the link between the music, but also between the composers. And I, I think you, you, you talk, talked a little bit about that relationship between the older Brahms, the younger, yeah. very impressionable Dvořák. Yeah. Well, I think for Dvořák, Brahms was a god, you know, and I think they live not far from each other. And I think that Dvořák got an inspiration to write Slavonic dances when he heard the Hungarian dances. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think from what I understand, uh, somebody arranged a meeting between older Brahms and younger Dvořák. And uh, yeah, of course, Dvořák was very excited and he met and he showed him his Slavonic dances. And, um, Brahms was very impressed with them. And he said that it's really, you're very talented and everything, and you should write more Slavonic dances. Mm -hmm. So when Dvořák went back to Prague, he was extremely disappointed. He thought that Brahms said that he's really not good at symphonies, he should just write Slavonic dances. And he was worried that it was a disapproval Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and not approval <clears throat> of his talent. But of course, it was a misunderstanding Brahms meant that he was, he acknowledged another genius. Yes. I was interested also to read that the, of course, the, 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 this, these Hungarian dances, this, this was at a time when, so to speak, minority cultures were uh, exotic and, and composers liked to embrace the Hungarian aspect of it, the Slavonic uh, aspect of it, but that all of uh, many of what Brahms uh, bases his dances on are actual folk songs, and all of Dvorak's Slavonic dances are original Dvorak. And, but you have the feeling, with as you know, with both composers, that this this they do sound like folk tunes. They they sound like things that are whistled in a village. Yeah. And I was also interested to read that um, th these two pieces began life uh, as music for four hands at the piano. Uh, and then, of course, uh, were orchestrated. And Dvořák was actually uh, one of the composers who orchestrated uh, two or three of, the, three of the dances. Yes, of course, uh, uh, Brahms lived in Austro-Hungarian empire, so the Hungarian culture was uh, very dominant. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, and there's a big difference, I think, between Slavonic dances and Hungarian dances. I think Slo the Slavonic dances have softer edge to them. Mm -hmm. You can see the difference, even geographically, it's not that far, but there's a big cultural difference. And, uh, and of course, both in equally beautiful. It's hard to say what's more beautiful. Yes, I remember when we were working together, we were talking about the bam, ba -ba -bam, bam, ba -ba -bam. That little mordant, that little yes. grace note that, as you, you were saying, and for me it was something I didn't, hadn't really thought about it until you articulated it, that, that, that perhaps in the more Germanic repertoire, a, a sharper, crisper, uh, more exciting grace note is more appropriate, but in Dvořák it, 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 has, it should be, as you say, softer, more, more lyrical and... and Perhaps I tried to make a difference between different composers, that uh, every composer has his voice, and uh, Beethoven, of course, is, uh, has everything, and her heroic, mm -hmm. and delicate, and mysterious, and Beethoven <coughs> has everything, but, mm -hmm. you know, but I think, in general, every composer has his own voice, and it has to be articulated mm -hmm. on the instrument that you choose to play. We are both, of course, sitting here in the midst of a very surreal situation uh, with regard to the, the COVID virus and the fact that we are sitting, so to speak, in an empty hall. 
Uh, we are about six feet apart, so I it's think okay. we're actually. Uh, I don't need my mask. <laughs> no, you don't need your mask. I think we're, we 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 have the appropriate social distance. But I I would just like to say on behalf of the festival uh, how thrilled and grateful we are that you are taking part because any kind of travel anywhere in the world today, uh, but particularly in America, going from one place to the next. Uh, during this time is certainly more stressful than usual and for you to have taken the trouble to come here and and give us your just extraordinary uh, talents we for me personally also uh, where i don't spend so much time at the piano now primarily because i do a lot of conducting you do spend a lot of time these days you spend more time here than i do <laughs> well yeah but i it's just i you you really um you've always inspired me and i know we enjoy this really rather remarkable relationship and it means the world to us that you have come that you are performing that you're performing with our players and and not so much as a conductor or even as a friend but uh, as a pianist, to actually play with you, it's just, um, it's a very different experience uh, for me, for which I'm, for, my, for which we're all very grateful for you. Well, I love the festival. I love uh, working with you. I love the musicians that come here. I love this concert hall and your pianos are wonderful. And I, I'm very thrilled to be here. We are very, of course, excited and very very hopeful uh, that you will uh, be very much a featured artist next year in, in our 60th season and uh, we hope by then a, a degree of normality will have um, set in and that we indeed can as you know we're recording here uh, it's a very poignant feeling to be performing for an empty hall but we very much hope that our collaboration your collaboration with the musicians uh, will sustain many, many people who are missing uh, all of this. Yes, I, I hope for next summer that it will go back to normal and uh, hopefully before that. And we'll have, um, you know, did you see the baseball games these days and they have <laughs> the, the cut cutouts, out, the cutouts, yes. cutouts of people and you can actually buy a present for somebody for 80, 85 dollars to, to have your so I hope it doesn't happen next summer, but if it does, <laughs> and I really hope it doesn't, I emphasize again, that we'll have cutouts of, of people. Perhaps we could have just lots and lots of cutouts of you, or we could have perhaps 20 femas around the auditorium and somebody wins a prize if they, you know. No, just one is enough. Okay, just 20 one. 20 Donalds. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Maestro. Fima, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. It's great to be here. I think we have some music to play, so... Yeah, let's we? play. Let's play.